members of the UWA Senate, distinguished guests, proud parents, and most importantly of all, graduates, thank you so much for having me here tonight. I'm so very honored to have been invited. Not so long ago, I almost swore off making speeches after an unforgettable incident in New York. I'd been given an incredible opportunity to present to 300 CEOs from cosmetics companies all around the world. It was a high stakes moment. Disaster struck one minute, 27 seconds, into my 30 minute speech when, shifting from one toweringly high stiletto to the other, I lost my balance and crashed to the floor. I now know the meaning of time stood still. On my way down, as I flashed my entire global peer group, my first thought was, am I wearing sensible underwear? <laughs> my second thought was, as I heard the collective gasp of horror from the audience, right, I just have to pick myself up, dust myself off, and get on with it. Because that's life. That's what we do, no matter what. Despite that spectacular fall, here I am, anyway, still standing. You could say I'm a glutton for punishment. I'd say I've learned not to take myself too seriously and not to fear failure. Two approaches I highly recommend. I'd also like to think I learn from my many mistakes, an important life skill for everyone, which is why I'm wearing flats. <laughs> Lesson learned. There's another reason why, if I were of sound mind, I would not be up here at this lectern. Tim Minchin stood here in 2013 and regaled the graduating class with a lyrically beautiful, side-splittingly funny address that covered nine life lessons perfectly. How do I know this? I'm one of over 2.6 million people who've watched him absolutely nail it on YouTube. So, it's lucky I learned early on not to compare myself to others. It's incredibly liberating, and it allows me to be here tonight, having marveled at Tim's speech, but not be crippled by it. My advice is, don't compare yourself to others. There's just no joy in it. Rather, get on and lead your own life. If I shouldn't be standing here, then why am I? It's because I remember sitting where you are nearly 30 years ago on, at my own graduation ceremony, spending half the night lamenting the fact that my three wonderful, precious years at UWA were over, and the other half in a highly anxious state, wondering what to do with my life. So I'm here to reassure you that you should focus on having a hold onto your hats risk-filled, exhilarating, brilliant time on the journey of life, rather than worry too much about the destination. Now, just to qualify by risk-filled, I'm not talking about bungee jumping out of helicopters. I'm talking about pushing yourselves into new, challenging, and uncomfortable areas. It's only by continually teetering on the outer edge of your comfort zone that you'll actually accomplish all that you're truly capable of. Now, since I didn't have that longed for career epiphany, I decided to travel one year around the world and then undertake further study, a couple of years at Boston University doing a master's. Travel and further study, two things to easily and wholeheartedly recommend. The moment arrived when it really was time to get a grown up job and earn a living and yet I was still stumped. So I chose my first position, not because I had a calling, but because my managing director-to-be was an extraordinary woman, and upon meeting her, I immediately thought, ha, I wanna hitch my wagon to this horse. I truly believe who you surround yourself with is critical to your success and happiness. 
So search out the very best people in all that you do. Fast forward nearly three decades, and there have been a few other guiding principles that have helped, me, that have helped steer me on my journey. This next one may sound very mundane, sorry about that, but I think it's critical. It's just work hard, whatever the situation. I learned this in my first job out of uni at L'Oreal in London. I waltzed in, excited at the anticipated glamour of it all. My first three months were spent navigating my way around congested motorways and depressed high streets, always under grey, leaden skies, we're talking England after all, trying to locate supermarkets so I could stack the shelves and straighten L'Oreal bottles. And yes, I could have pondered whether I really needed my two degrees to do the job at hand, but in retrospect, it was a wonderful lesson in humility and doing whatever task you are given well. Anyway, once in head office, the imagined glamour, glamour was still elusive, but the workload was immediate. It was quite brutally, do a good job or get out. Looking back, I'm not actually sure I did a great job, but I'm certainly grateful for the almost vertical learning curve and the learned ability to work hard. Now, in all good conscience, I can't counsel you to work hard without overlaying an even more important piece of the puzzle, and that is, whatever you do actually do, make sure it's something you love doing, and don't settle until you find your thing. If you love what you do, you'll happily put in the necessary hard yards. As usual, Shakespeare puts it perfectly. To business that we love, we rise, be time, and go to it with delight. I couldn't resist that one quote, because I'm an English graduate and all, so that's why that one's in there. My final guiding principle has been to be positive, no matter what. I've learned not to let that voice in my head psych me out. Positivity, simple concept, tick. Making the voice in your head your friend, well, that's a trickier business. I often think back not to the grand opening day of my first Mecca store nearly 20 years ago, but to the next day, that second morning, after much frantic searching, it became clear I had lost the first day's takings. Not only did I desperately need that $1,873, but there was the horrifying symbolism of it. How could I have been so stupid? I didn't find that money for 18 months. So well hidden, was it, in an envelope, in a box, in a cupboard, behind a sink. And if I hadn't resolved to flip that incredibly judgmental inner voice into something kinder and more generous of spirit, well, my confidence would have taken an awful beating. And we all know self-belief is essential to any endeavor, especially a new business startup. My aha moment from this was to endeavor to be positive about every situation in life. And without trying to put a philosophical slant on it, it is only you and your thoughts going on up there in that head of yours. So you can spin it any way you want. It's a choice. I choose to spin positive, and I so recommend you do the same. Having tried to decode 27 years of post-uni rough and tumble into some sort of framework for success and happiness, I think it's important to overlay a bit of a get-out-of-jail card in the form of luck. I'm crystal clear that luck plays an instrumental role in life. For me, it was having incredible parents who dragged me half away around the world at 14 for their middle-aged adventure, and yet who also valued education above all else being in the right place at the right time when I started my business. 
and marrying really well. Now, just before, just before, <laughs> not in the sense of marrying a Mr. Darcy with wads of cash and a Pembley-like estate in the background, but in finding a husband who is so comfortable in his own skin that he has willingly supported me every step of the way. And now, having kids of my own who absolutely demand I have a more rounded life and who reinforce the importance of family, family, family. Now, naturally, I hope my luck in business and in life holds, but by recognizing the role of luck, it makes me more accepting of the potentially good, bad, and ugly that may come my way. It's quite empowering to know that while I may not always be in charge of what happens, I am in control of my response to it. That just feels so much more manageable your luck is that you are graduating with a degree in hand from UWA tonight in the prime of life, poised for an incredible life adventure. So go forth, seize life by the scruff of the neck, and please allow us all to live vicariously through your adventures. Good luck to you all, and thank you very much.